Hi, I'm Ryan Szymanski, creator for Battleship New Jersey Museum and Memorial. And in today's video, we get to talk about some of the cool features of the submarine New Jersey SSN 796. She's going to be commissioned in about two months on September 14th, 2024. And uh, we have been giving tours to their crew members as they come up and visit the ship. In fact, we've got a group of uh, about 10 sailors from the new New Jersey coming on board later today that we're going to give a tour to. We've been able to rotate out, uh, I don't know, probably over 100 of the crew members over the last couple of years. They've come up from Virginia uh, to take the tour of the battleship, see their namesake ship. And they invited some of our staff down for a reciprocal tour and to join them for lunch on the mess decks. So last week, we got to spend a very cool time on board the new USS New Jersey. Obviously, there was some stuff there that we saw that we're not going to talk about. Uh, photographs of the ship were very limited, and we tried to use the equipment we had to uh, shoot a video there on the pier with the ship, but it didn't go well. So we're going to reshoot it here in the exhibit that we have on the battleship to the three ships named New Jersey. Even though the submarine hasn't even been commissioned yet, we're already collecting historically significant parts from her to put on display. It's likely that as a nuclear powered vessel, she will never be preserved as a museum ship. And so Battleship New Jersey will remain the repository of her historic artifacts throughout the ship's career and even 30 years later when she's no longer in service. So that brings us to the first fun fact of USS New Jersey. She is designed to last for 30 years. That is the lifespan of her nuclear reactor. She has a 100 megawatt nuclear reactor that provides power for the ship, and it will last 30 years before it needs to be refueled. In previous classes of submarines, when it needs to be refueled, you essentially have to cut open the entire boat during a, a massive years-long, multi-million, probably billion-dollar project now uh, to put in a new reactor. These boats don't need that done. They will go into service and they will continue to serve for about 30 years, which ends up being about 15 active deployments. One interesting thing that we noticed going through the boat is that there's, there's, a, there's only one watertight door. There's only one watertight door on the entire submarine. Well, so there's a couple of watertight hatches on the boat, just like all submarines have for access. Uh, there's a pair associated with the lockout trunk one of which is from inside the boat to get into the trunk, and then one, of course, up through the deck. Uh, but inside the boat, to go from one habitable space to another, there's only a single compartment that has a quick-acting watertight door, and that is the uh, reactor compartment, which obviously we did not get a tour of. Um, many of the compartments on the boat had uh, like regular doorways, and they had those uh, like fabric-y, fold-down fire doors that would Velcro on. We've seen those on more modern ships, like the Perry-class frigates that we've stripped parts off of. New Jersey doesn't have those. Her watertight doors act as the fire boundaries. Obviously, that's suboptimal in some ways, because one, the watertight doors are heavier. Two, if there's a fire on one side, those doors heat up tremendously, and they can heat up enough to transfer enough heat to light the space that it's trying to protect on fire. And so the standard watertight doors don't always work as fire boundaries. There are some uh, doors that are specifically thicker to act in that purpose to, to divide the ship. I think it's five or six fire boundaries for the battleship. Uh, but the submarine has some of these lightweight, easy to deploy ones like you see on, on more modern ships. Now, interestingly, because there aren't a series of watertight compartments, there aren't bullseyes all over the place. There were still compartment checkoff lists in places uh, but without the bullseyes all over the place, we initially couldn't figure out what frame number we were at. And then Captain Haley pointed out that the lockers and the various equipment around the ship have the frame number of their location on it. And, and so that's how you can see your frame number. Rather than duplicating things with stuff on the locker, stuff on the equipment, and then stuff on the bulkhead like we have on Battleship New Jersey, they just have it on the lockers. And let's face it, with the lockers in place, there isn't a whole heck of a lot of bulkhead left on the submarine. I had the opportunity in 2008 to take a limited tour of Los Angeles, SSN 688, 
the lead ship of the Los Angeles class two classes prior to the Virginias. Uh, and there felt like more space on the Virginia than uh, on the Los Angeles. Now keep in mind, 2008, I'm 18 years old. Uh, my memory is a little bit fallible there, but it felt like more space. Having worked on the submarine Torsk for about a decade, and uh, having visited many of the World War II era fleet boat museums, I can tell you she definitely has more space than those. By far, the coolest thing we got to see when we were there was inside of the control room. Previous classes of submarines that had actual periscopes, like physical hardware type periscopes, had the control room broken up into several compartments with sonar here and weapons there and the actual, what you think of as the control room with the con and the periscope um, in a separate place higher in the hall. Because the Virginias don't have traditional like glass look through periscopes, they have what are called photonics masts. Those are just fiber optic cables from a camera on top of the periscope mount or the photonics mast that uh, are able to run down through the hall. So they don't need to be in the highest compartment. They could put it in the middle of the three decks inside the pressure hall, which meant you had the most space, both width-wise and length-wise, for this equipment, which meant they were able to put it all in one nice space uh, that, that's roughly equivalent to mashing the battleship's bridge and uh, CEC into one room. The coolest thing by far in that room is the controller for the photonics mast. Originally, Virginia class submarines got F-16 joysticks as the controllers. It's a military thing that we're already using, but it was something that the sailors had to be trained in. And the uh, way that it moves around isn't necessarily uh, conductive to moving around a periscope. So one of the things that makes the Virginia class uh, cheaper and easier to man and operate than the preceding Seawolf class, one reason why there's only three Seawolves and uh, I think New Jersey is the 23rd Virginia and there will, she's likely only halfway through the production run. We'll, we'll probably keep making these until we've made 50 or 60 of them if I had to guess. I can't remember how many have already been authorized, uh, but the Seawolves were too expensive. They were too difficult to use. With the Virginias, they just took another technology from somewhere else, the, the joystick, and that wasn't simple enough or cheap enough. So they took what's known as COTS, civilian off-the-shelf technology. In this case, it's an Xbox 360 controller, the, the kind that nobody wants that has the power cord to it, not the like battery operated one, the, the like USB corded ones. So like you can find one on eBay for 15 or 20 bucks new, like an actual Microsoft one, not one of the like cheapo knockoff ones. And they use this controller that every sailor serving on the ship has used at some point in their life to control the photonics mast. So you can use the joystick to rotate it around. Uh, you can use the, the triggers to use the laser range finder. And one of the other buttons controlled zooming in and zooming out. And then of course, the Xbox button in the middle gives you the instructional screen, just like on many video games. Now, I don't love the video gamification of war, but it does make sense to take this relatively cheap technology that everybody's already been trained on, and put it into the hands of uh, somebody and it, we, we, got to, we got to use it. We got to actually slew the periscope around. They had one of the periscopes up in port. Uh, I think they were doing some sort of maintenance work. Uh, so we, we actually got to use it, and it worked really great. And we were able to just pick it up and use it no problem, even though I haven't played Xbox since I was in college. I think that was by far the coolest thing uh, that, that we saw, that we learned while we were there. And I hope you guys think so, too. Another cool thing was that uh, on, on this ship, if you need to communicate with someone else, you have to go to a rotary telephone that's mounted on the bulkhead. Or maybe there's a 21MC box or a 1MC station or something like that where you can put like a, a big blast out on a party line uh, to reach people. But 
they had uh, essentially cell phones. Everybody on watch was carrying around a phone. They called them MomComs. They're made right here in Camden at L3 Harris. And they're, they're not quite like the cell phone you've got in your pocket. In fact, we had to leave the cell phones in our pocket in a Faraday cage box on the pier. Uh, but they've got these kind of Nokia brick type phones on board the boats, which I assume don't uh, violate MCOM uh, warfare rules and, and that sort of stuff. And they, they had like some sort of leaky coax run through the boat so that these could actually get signal from one point in the boat to another, even though you've got all the, the steel there preventing it. And so they were able to just pick up their phone and dial somebody or, I don't know, I, I didn't see how it was used. It might have had a, uh, a phone book in it like your cell phone has uh, to, to reach out to different people to say, hey, we're going up in the conning tower, like just letting the officer of the deck know, or things like that. Uh, and that was really cool. A huge improvement over what we have on this ship. We'd like to congratulate the crew of SSN 796 on uh, preparing the ship for commissioning. We are excited to participate in a couple of months and we really appreciate them giving us the tour. What are some stuff you'd like to hear us talk about in future videos about the submarine? The museum's mission is to tell the story of all of the USS New Jersey's from the pre-dreadnought to the submarine and into the future. So that means collecting artifacts relating to those ships and telling their story here on the channel. What's some stuff you'd like to hear about in the future? What are some artifacts you think it would be cool for us to collect for our exhibit? Let us know in the comment section down below. Battleship New Jersey receives operating support from the New Jersey Department of State, also from a number of the businesses and private individuals like yourselves. We really appreciate your support. There's a link in the description below for ways you can donate to support the museum. You can also support us by liking, sharing, and subscribing so more people find about us in the channel. Thanks for watching.